good afternoon. Thanks for joining us. Uh, my name is Andrea Christensen and I'm here with Rachel Calabrese. Um, both of us are volunteers for the Community Farm Stand and uh, that's why I was asked to be here today um, to share with you one of my uh, favorite recipes uh, for this time of year and actually any, kind, any time of year. Um, we're going to use some apples though today, uh, being apple season and all. So, um, but uh, I did volunteer with the farm stand um, at the request of Rachel and some other folks that are involved and provided them with some recipes uh, for the season um, with the new fresh face that everyone worked so hard over the winter to provide for the farm stand. They wanted to just add a little bit more to it and I was happy to do that. So um, that being said, um, why did I provide recipes? Well, I worked as a chef um, you know, for most of my adult life. Um, and for the last year have been teaching um, classes with Rachel at the urging of Rachel um, for the recreation department in Foxboro uh, for adults and children. So a little bit about more about my background. Um, I have worked as a chef for um, the last 15 or so years um, and uh, lived here, grew up in Foxboro, a member of the Daniels family and Normandy Farms campground. Um, started uh, my love of food at a young age and my love of hospitality and uh, decided to go to culinary school. Um, followed that up with a stint at Boston University, um, graduated there from their School of Hospitality Administration. Uh, and then, uh, you know, little by little, um, started getting into the industry. Uh, I had my own catering business. I don't know if you were in town, Rachel, when I had that. No, I don't think so. Okay. Yeah. Um, and uh, after that, I uh, took care of the food service for Normandy Farms Campground, my family's business, and um, started working actually as a chef instructor at Boston University um, and did that combined with the campground uh, work for about 10 years. And a um, few years back, I uh, decided to take a break uh, to spend some more time with my family, as a lot of our, I think, friends do, yeah. we're finding. Yeah. Um, and uh, like I said earlier, a year ago this time, I um, was really lucky when Rachel approached me uh, about teaching some cooking classes for the recreation department here in town. And I've been loving every minute of it. So um, let me get started with the crostata. So, great. Okay. Sounds great. All right. Um, have you ever made one of these before, Rachel? I have not. You have <laughs> not. Okay. <laughs> I don't do a lot of baking. Okay. Um, okay, so a crostata is very much uh, like a pie. Um, it's open, an open face pie. There's not going to be any top to it, um, but uh, a lot of the ingredients are very much the same. And I love this. I think you and I have talked about this particular recipe mm -hmm. in that um, we're using apples today for apple season, um, but this can be adjusted for any season's fruit. Um, I love cooking in season and locally. Um, you know, we, we talk all the time about the different farms that we like to visit um, and why it's great to cook seasonally. Um, whatever you're buying is in abundance. Um, everything about it is at its best. So, you know, these apples are great texture, great flavor, great aroma, all of those things. They're ready to use for food. Um, in the wintertime, I'm trying to think if you've ever had the pear one that I make. I didn't. I, I had the apple croissata when you had done um your uh, soups and stews. Right, but okay, so a few weeks back. Good, yeah, good, great. I'm glad you enjoyed that. Yeah. Um, so I do a pear one later on in the season. Sometimes I'll incorporate some uh, cranberries. Um, and this inspiration came to me um, from Ina Garten. I can't take, you know, the credit for that. She's, you know, one of my favorite people to watch. And, you know, years and years ago, um, I saw her do this and um, adjust it for the season. So um, we've got the pears that I'll, you know, make later on in the winter time. Uh, and then spring and summer, you can include berries, some nice strawberries, blueberries, um, raspberries. You said this is the fallback, like you love doing this and it's so simple to make that you've done it with a lot of your entertaining. And right, that, right, right. So uh, a couple of dinners that we did um, this past winter for um, the BIT auction. Mm -hmm. um, people bid on um, a dinner experience with me um, and I made the pear um, crostata with um, some uh, dried uh, cranberries and um, one of the dinners oh, even delicious. paired it with wine and so they had a Prosecco that went really nice with it so um, you know the like flavors yeah so um, so let me yeah jump right into it um, okay all right so it's very simple and straightforward I'm going to take a cup of all-purpose flour and there's all different kinds of flours that we can use and they all give us a different kind of finished product. All purpose is that great middle of the road that you can use for a variety of, um, a variety of dishes. And you know, you were saying, Rachel, this is so simple, um, and uh, and it's pretty impressive, you know, when you make it for your friends. So um, it I looked fantastic. It was it, it was great to 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 eat too, but it just looked so. Uh, 
perfect. So uh, uh, Martha Stewartish, you know, uh, uh, just uh, yeah. <laughs> um, I've just put in two tablespoons of granulated sugar, and let's see here, a quarter of a teaspoon of kosher salt. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and give this a pulse just to combine all my ingredients. Okay. And I've got some butter that I had cut up earlier. And let's see here. Um, I cut it into um, equal pieces, you can see here, you know, so cubes. Great. All right. Um, and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut the butter into the flour and sugar and salt mixture um, and you're going to get these little great little pieces of butter all throughout and that's what's going to make it really nice and tender. What, you know we associate with like a tart dough. In this case we've got that very fancy name of a crostata or um, a pie. So they're all, uh, it's all the similar, similar preparations. So these little pieces of fat are all throughout and they actually end up tenderizing. Um, the pie crust and make it really light and flaky and wonderful to eat. Okay? Okay, okay so I'm going to go ahead and pulse this, I don't know, 15 to 20 times um, until it's like the size of a pea. So okay. let's see here. All right, I'm going to take a look. And just a little bit more. I've got some pieces that are a little larger than others. Have you ever made a homemade pie dough? I have not. You have not? How no. about mom or mother-in-law or? Yeah, my mom has. Okay. Okay. And my grandma. Okay. She's a pretty decent one. She was actually a cook. <laughs> she was. Okay. She was the cook. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So I'm there. I've got uh, nice pea-sized um, pieces of fat um, in here. Great. Okay. The butter. And this is an unsalted butter. Anytime you're baking, um, when it just refers to butter, you're using an unsalted butter so you control the amount of uh, salt that's in there. Um, and I've got some ice water that I prepared earlier. I think it froze up on me, so that's okay. I'm going to go ahead and add a little bit more. It is important for it to be nice and cold. Yeah. So it doesn't melt the fat at all. I think this will do it. Just give it a little, a little stir. Okay. All right. And with the machine running, I'm going to go ahead and drizzle in I don't know, about two tablespoons of, uh, of um, ice water. And I'll just count. Uh, for each tablespoon, I think it's like a three count for the most part. Mm -hmm. So three, one, two, three, a little bit more. All right, and then kind of looks like wet sand. Mm -hmm. So it's just before it starts to come together in one giant mass, I'm going to stop the machine. It's getting closer. It's changing. It's changing. And we're just about there. Okay. All right. Okay. I've got a piece of plastic wrap right here for myself. And I'm going to go ahead and form this into one giant ball. And that's the homemade crust. And this is the homemade crust. Yeah. It was that simple. That simple. One of the ladies at our Soups and Sues night said, oh, I couldn't possibly ever make that. And I definitely think yeah, that she could. Very, yeah, right. <laughs> it looks very easy. Even yeah. I could do that. There you go. <laughs> there you go. So, okay. Just a little bit of flour. Okay. I'm just going to shape this into a disc and put this in the refrigerator. And you need this to set up for at least an hour. I uh, fortunately prepared one uh, earlier today. So we've got one ready for us mm -hmm. to finish on with our demonstration here. Okay. All right. So this one um, I prepared earlier today. And um, that'll be ready for us to use in just a minute. Um, so before um, I roll that out, I want to talk to you about how to prepare the apples. Do you have a favorite kind of apple that you like to use or eat? Or Macintosh. Ma well, these yeah. are Macs, so that's yeah. good. Very yeah, good. I noticed. And the farm stand's closed, so I couldn't go there to buy them. <laughs> so I went to the Big Apple, which I was happy to do. Yeah. I love the Big Apple. Not only do they have, you know, apples, but they've got all sorts of other good stuff to offer. Yeah. So, um, all right. So what I did is I started... Um, a couple of things uh, about working with apples. Um, they are going to turn brown. The you know, fancy term is oxidized. So um, I've got some uh, water here with lemon juice. So I just took a lemon 
and um, went ahead and squeezed it in. You know, this is a half, not even a half a lemon. Um, and I need about three apples uh, for this recipe. So um, that's, that's all you, you need is three apples. That's all you really need. Three right. to four it apples, like depending on the size. Yep. Three to four apples, depending on the size. Great. So um, I've got one ready here. You can go at it with a paring knife if you'd like to. Um, you could also go at it with a vegetable peeler. It's really the choice is yours. Um, you know, as far as knives go, um, how are you? Do you have a good set? Did you get them? I do, em? yeah. You, okay, good. Um, that's something I always urge people. You know, like any anyone, like a carpenter needs good tools. Um, you know, a hairdresser needs nice sharp scissors and things like that. Same with chefs. You need to, um, you know, have tools that are in good shape and ready to work with. So, and you can really hurt yourself um, with a knife that's not sharp. Um, and uh, it'll, you know, cut yourself badly in a, a you know, sharp knife. It, could still cut you certainly, but it's um, going to heal easier, and um, it's just a better way to work. So I'll just put these in here for now. Um, it, you know, as far as maintaining your knives, does Greg sharpen them for you at home, or? Yeah, I know I have a sharpener. You do have a sharpener. Yeah. Good. Okay. Yeah. Good. Um, people have home sharpeners, which is great, and there's also some services locally that you can drop your knives off, um, get them sharpened, and pick them up later that day, which is fantastic. Yeah, there's so. some at that when you we went to farmers markets or something. You said sometimes there's someone there. That right. Doesn't. Yeah. Every farmers market pretty much has yeah. somebody there to sharpen your knives. Um, I'm trying to think uh, the one in Pawtucket that we've been to, the right. indoor market. Um, there's a great one in Franklin that we've been to that yeah. uh, has somebody there to sharpen their knives. Um, and uh, the Hope Street in yeah. Providence, which is, you know, for the uh, warmer months, which will be, you know, taking us to the end of October. Right. That'll be available. So um, as well as hub grinding in um, Walpole on Stone Street, you can drop your knives off to those guys and they'll sharpen them for you. So, um, okay, so I've got my apple peeled here. I've got my other two guys in there. And I'm just going to cut around the core. Okay, just put the core and these guys back in the water with the lemon juice so they won't turn brown. I don't need the cores, but I'm going to use that as my uh, trash bucket as well. Okay, you know, when you're cutting a knife, um, you want a, a relatively, uh, well, you do want a flat surface, as flat of a surface as you can, um, so it's not rolling around on you. And another trick I'll show you is I took a paper towel and I uh, went ahead and uh, wet that put it underneath my cutting board and that provides um, like a, a suction pad oh, so it won't okay. slip around on me. Yeah. So that's great. So um, now I'm going to go ahead and cut these in, I don't know, one inch pieces. So, um, you know, we cut things in the same shape or relatively the same size for a number of reasons. Um, so they'll cook at the same rate, so they'll look nice. Um, okay, so this is a, a pretty rustic kind of dessert. So, um, you know, it's not like one of the, you know, fanciest restaurants in Boston where I'm concerned with um, you know, having exact measurements, you know, and, and things like that. I'm just more concerned that it uh, is going to look nice and, uh, you know, look pretty and, yeah, and cook at the same rate. Yeah. Yep, because otherwise you're going to have one piece of apple that's going to be mushy and then one apple that's going to be really uh, still firm on you. So, okay. It's looking so easy to prepare. I think when <laughs> I saw the finished pro product at the yeah. end, I'm like, well, how do you make that? It, right? Yeah. And, <laughs> Looking easy to prepare. Yep, it is good. So, okay. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to just get rid of my water here. Okay. And, um, you know, when we have the classes, the adult culinary nights, I love talking to people about tools and um, th things that, you know, are th that anyone could buy, even like kind of the, you know, average kind of home cook. So, and this is one of them. This is called a bench scraper, something that, um, uh, you know, pastry chefs uh, use all the time to, you know, scrape the dough off of workbenches. So, and it's just so nice because, I mean, I can just yeah. scoop it up. <laughs> You've given a lot of those tool tips to a lot of people during the different classes, and right. I see them going out and getting it, right? After, like, the thermometer right. that you right. had talked about at some right. of those classes. Yeah, I think someone said that they had given them to their family, like, yeah. all their family members for Christmas. <laughs> so a, a remote thermometer, which is great for roasting meats, and we're definitely headed into that season. Mm -hmm. So, um, okay, so I've got my apples cut up in here. Um, and I'm actually going to need my food processor one more time here um, to make um, a streusel topping. Um, so this is going to get mixed in with the apples. There's going to be a little bit of flour in it, a little bit of sugar, um, some cinnamon, and some allspice. So all of those flavors that we um, think of when we think of, you know, apple pie, you know, kind of thing. So um, I've got this. I've got my butter here. I'll show you another great use for this. You know, it cuts as well. So this is what I use to cut the butter. 
little paper there on the side. Just cutting it into relatively the same size. I'm going to put this back into my food processor. Okay, but after I go ahead and um, add my flour and sugar. So it's equal parts flour and sugar. Uh, in this case, I'm just making one. Oh, I put that over there. I need it back. Where'd you go? There's my blade. Um, quarter a cup of uh, all-purpose flour again, right? And quarter of a cup of granulated sugar. Okay. And then, oh, I don't know, about a quarter of a teaspoon of um, cinnamon. That's my favorite part. The cinnamon, yeah. yeah. And this is, I have to say, I, I, I enjoy the flavor and smell of organic cinnamon over conventional cinnamon. So this is an organic cinnamon. Okay. And, uh, and it is, you know, it's a little bit more expensive, but. Do you mind if I look? Go right ahead. And then some allspice, about an eighth of a teaspoon of allspice. And my salt. I do want a little bit of salt in here as well. Let's see. Okay. All right, let me give this a mix before I add my butter. Okay. Pulse this until it gets um, nice and crumbly, like looks like wet sand. And this will get mixed in with the apples. This is going to get mixed in with the apples. Right. Yep. And we're going to roll out our crostata dough in just a second here, okay. um, and prepare it. And I have a TV swap out. I made one earlier, so we'll oh, get to see the finished product. <laughs> okay. All right. So I've got my apples here, and my little streusel. Okay. I'm just going to go ahead and add that to the mixture. Just give it a nice toss and I'll have Rachel, you can smell, smell it. Yeah. Oh, it smells fantastic. You could put a little lemon zest in, a little yeah. orange zest if you yeah. wanted to, just to kind of brighten it up. Um, I've got some Grand Meunier here, which I think I might add, which is an orange flavored liqueur, which is, you know, yeah. wonderful and you can smell that. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it smells good. Good. Yep, so I don't want to be too heavy-handed here and put too much in, so I'll add it separately. And just a little bit more. Okay. And these guys are good. Oh, good. Okay, so go back in here for my dough that's been waiting for me. And you said that was about an hour? It but at least so? an hour. Least I, I an mean, hour. I made this earlier this morning. So Could you make it much earlier? You could make it a day in advance. Okay. Yep, you could. I'm going to flip my board. That's another little thing that we do in the industry, you know, rather than running off to the uh, sink every time. Yeah. All right. And so we've got that. I'm going to get a little bit of flour for myself, just so it doesn't stick. And I'm going to roll this out. Okay. Roll. I'm starting from the middle, and I'm pulling towards myself, okay. and then I'm pushing away. So everything goes back to the middle. And it, you notice I'm not, you know, just going crazy at it. Um, I don't want to toughen the dough. Um, you know, we went through all the trouble of making sure the fat was the right flavor, and. Um, uh, the right, excuse me, the right temperature, so it would, you know, get broken up into all little pieces there. And uh, let's see, it's starting to stick, so I'll go ahead and flour a little bit more. It's really sticking on me. Let's give a little bit more to the top there. This piece doesn't Yeah, now that stay I'm on. seeing how, how simple it is to do with right. the homemade, you know what I mean? The homemade dough, yeah. right. So you try it. What do you think? Would you? Would you make? Well, oh yeah. Yeah, you'd have to experiment with your <coughs> gluten-free uh, yeah. flours and mixes and things like that. Yeah. So, but uh, I think you could definitely do it. So I'm looking at like about 11 inches. I want to roll this out to, mm -hmm. and I know that my um, 
you know, one of the things you learn in the industry is how to make things easier for yourself. So I know that my rolling pin is approximately 12 inches long. So okay. I'm going to stop in just a minute. Not that it's, you know, not that you have to measure. And recipes, I don't know, wherever you get the inspiration for. Recipes right. are great first time around, second time around, and then make it your own. Um, but it's just great for the inspiration. You know, wherever you get the inspiration from is fantastic. If you go out to eat and you really enjoy something and you want to try to recreate it at home, right. you read something in a you know, magazine while you're waiting for the dentist for your kids, wherever it is, it's all good. And it's just, I love that people get so excited about yeah, it. Yeah. So. <clears throat> Have you tried it with different variations, like, car like I don't know if it's caramel or whatever it is? Well, so when I put this together um, to offer people, you know, at a dinner, you know, um, yes, I, I, you know, when you have a dessert, technically, you should have your main item, which in this case is the crostata. Mm -hmm. You should have a sauce, which for the apple, absolutely, a caramel sauce would be the way to go. Right. I've got some ice cream in the freezer that I'll share with everybody in a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, and, um, and then, you know, some kind of additional garnish. So maybe in this case, you know, you could candy up some apples. Um, you could um, get, uh, you know, like a ginger snap cookie or something like that and put it in the oh, ice cream, you know, just to great. add a little bit, yeah. you know, a little something Flair. to it. So um, well, over the summer when I did a summer fruit one, I did a berry sauce. I did a raspberry sauce, you know, right. to accompany it and yeah. uh, some vanilla ice cream. So we'll go ahead. Um, that's rolled out for me. I'm going to go ahead and put my mixture. in here. Mm -hmm. Let me just give my hands a little bit of a wipe. And I'm just going to fold over the edges. Great. Okay, you don't have to, you know, uh, I had a, a, you know, both of my grandmothers were outstanding cooks and I think that that's that and combined with my mom being a wonderful cook, that's, you know, what started me on my way. Um, and uh, both of them were great bakers, I have to say. So I'm just folding over the edges. Uh, but so they like would. Open face. Right, yeah. open face. They would crimp a pie crust like it was nobody's business, you know. Yeah. Um, but this is, I think, the reason, part of the reason why I offered this up t um, when we were talking about what to make was how easy it is, and you don't have to get worried about how you're folding it over right. um, and, and all of that. Well, I think it makes a perfect, um, per you know, a leeway to the apple pie that you're going to bake at the, um, you're going to do an apple pie demonstration. That's right, yep. Come October 11th at the farm stand. Right. And uh, that should be great. So you could just demonstrate your favorite apple pie. Okay. and Yes, yeah. So it, that will be a traditional apple pie. It won't be the crostata. Yeah. But a lot of the same flavors. And the crust is, is very similar. Yeah. 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 So I'm great. excited about that. That's coming fun. up, not this Saturday, but next. Next Saturday, October 11th at 2 o'clock. Okay, right. Yeah, we'll have right. a demonstration and right. everybody's invited to come down and Good. And you've and got other things got. going on. We at do, the farm we do. Stand. At the farm stand um, on October 4th and 5th, um, we have a couple of different events. I'm not sure if this will air in time. For okay. That. Um, but on the 12th, we have people bringing down their recipes. Your recipe cards were such a success. That's nice. Um, oh, that's and great people to hear. loved it. Good. That we said, you know what? A lot of people have recipes in their families that they use um, vegetables and everyth everything that we have at the farm stand so bring down your recipes so next year we'll have even more cards oh that's great that's yeah, a great way to get the rest of the community involved yeah oh, that's awesome. be fun that's really good 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 okay um, well let me I, I do I wanted to talk to you some more about you know some of the other things that you guys are doing you've got a couple weekends at the farm stand yeah um, we do we also have hay rides we're gonna have hay rides for the kids free hay okay. rides to go back behind beyond the farm um, we have uh, somebody who's playing guitar acoustical acoustical guitar um, and we, it'll be it'll be nice. It'll, it's a nice way to wrap up such a successful season. Good. We had a fantastic. I mean, starting off the season not knowing if we were going to even have a season right. with a vandalized trailer. Now this really just wraps up and says thank you to the whole community who's That's done great. so much. That's awesome. Yeah. That's awesome. So um, okay. Well, um, just to get back to this, I, I've got my uh, half sheet pan here, um, and it's lined with something called a, it's a silicone baking sheet, um, and um, you know I, I call it a Silpat or an Exopat because those are the brand names that we use in the industry. It's like a Kleenex, it's not really Kleenex, it's the tissue, but we all recognize Kleenex as the brand, so that's, you know, what ends up happening to us. So um, if you don't have these silicone baking sheets at home, and if you do go out to buy them, just make sure that you've got the right size for the pan that you're using. Um, I'm trying to think, Kohl's sells them, uh, Target sells them, Amazon, you could find a bunch of them to sell them to you. Um, 
and this is a half sheet size, or they sell parchment paper at the supermarkets now. And what this does is this makes it uh, bake more evenly and provides a non-stick surface for it. So okay. it's great for that. So um, yeah, so I've got my uh, finished guy here. I would put this into a preheated oven, a 450 degree preheated oven for, I don't know, about 20, 25 minutes. Um, that's it. Oh, that's wow, it. That's, great. that's it. So let me Fantastic. put this guy uh, off to the side here and um, give you a little ta-da. So, and... Uh, Oh. There's your finished product. That so, looks great. Yeah. Yeah. So, and I've got some vanilla ice cream. So let me go ahead and plate this up the way I would. Great. Um, and uh, now you do a lot of these while you're doing that. I'll yes. just say you do a lot of these um, cooking classes for us that you kind of uh, for the Foxborough Recreation. Right. And um, each month has a different theme. I right. Think. So last month we did soups and stews. We did. Where yep. you serve this crustata. Yes. Or and that's why I said, please do the crustata <laughs> again. Um, and I then right on, on uh, next month, October 15th, you do, um, you're do you doing, cup, uh, sorry, couples, couples cooking. cooking. Right. 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 So I think you only have two more couples. As, and and then the we're open spots. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And then we're full on that. Okay. Good. Um, and then in November, which right. is filling up nicely, is the holiday appetizers and desserts. Excellent. I think that's November fifteenth. Okay. Well, we're doing the third Wednesday of every third month. Third Wednesday of every we're month. Trying so maybe to it's the nineteenth. Get to a schedule. There, yeah. Right. Third Wednesday of every month. And um, that's, you're just going to make all the things you entertain with during the holidays, right. appetizers, desserts. We demonstrate for everybody. Right. And one of the best parts that I love about, about your um, programs is that we get to eat everything. At right. <laughs> right. So it's great. Right. And we, you know, we were playing around with a format for a while here, yeah. and we thought people would want to dive in and be hands-on, and we're finding that they enjoy Watching, watching you do it. do it all and then eating it afterwards <laughs> yeah. and picking my brain and that's fine. But they also love getting the tips. Like I think the first th one of the first things you did was fish and you kind of just showed how you rotate when you're flipping them and right. you start clock, you know, right. at the top and right. go clockwise. Right. And oftentimes I'm doing something and multitasking while I'm doing it and I never I say, well, oh, what piece did I flip now or whatever and right. I learn right. so the way you do this. I think people get a lot of good tips good. from what good. you're doing. Good. Awesome. Great. Um, right, so here it is. And I know we've got, uh, got this guy here. Oh, he didn't cut all the way through on me. Okay. Yeah, so if, you know, I, I would put a nice bed of caramel sauce if I was going to, um, you know, if this was back in the day with yeah. my operation and I was plating dessert for, um, you know, uh, a number of people. Um, for a meal, and um, I've got some ice cream to go with it. Great, so. great, and you'll have, I think you have a recipe for that. I do have a so recipe we'll, for that, that yeah. I'm gonna give everybody at cable, um, uh, and they can go ahead and, and make sure that that's provided, so. All right, terrific. All right. Let's see here. A lot of the times when you do the classes and everything, one of the things that are the best parts, like when you do the kids cooking in the kitchen, right? the kids are all working with you and developing these meals, which they take home are, and are phenomenal, and I'm always wondering how I can recreate it. You right. always have the recipes there, so right. I, I love that part right. of it. Yep, um, no, I give everybody my yeah. recipes, and um, yeah, I've, I've enjoyed the kids' classes as much. You know, we talked about the adult classes just now, and um, the kids' classes, so we do a younger kids in the kitchen class where it's a no bake, no cook, and they take dinner home for their families. Right. And um, they're just so proud of what they've created. I yeah. think that's the best part. And they do it. They are, you know, it has to be adjusted for the younger kids, of course, yeah. but, but they're still doing it. They're yeah. in there making it. Um, they all tried out the avocado and yogurt dip the other night. They ate it when they were home. And they well, ate it with their vegetables. Yep. Yeah, so they that loved was great. It. Um, and, uh, and then we, you know, have a little bit more flexibility with the older kids, so nine years and older, um, where they are working, you know, with different kinds of tools, a little bit more challenging, a little bit more sophisticated, and a bigger variety of ingredients. And we actually cook, yeah. you know, we actually cook the stuff with them. So, and it's it's a full meal, you know, for a family of like three to five people. It's fantastic. Yeah. There's always leftovers. Good. Um, all three of my kids have taken a class with you. Nice. And the best thing about it is they try something that they would have never tried before. I think they, you know, to get... I couldn't, I was astonished when Lucy was eating, you know, avocado. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> she did, and she right. loved it, and she ate at home, too. So getting them to try something new is half the battle, I right. think. But if they, they prepare it and they're part of it, and it's they're contagious. willing to try it. Exactly, and it's, it's you know, if, if maybe someone was at first, I don't think I want to try that, it just takes one kid in the class to say, oh, but I love that, and then, oh, well, yeah, I love that, too. You know, yeah. so then everybody is uh, enjoying it, so. Great. It right. looks great, Andrea. So this is for you, my friends. All right. Great. Get you a napkin. Fantastic. All right. 
And I'll get some more ready because we've got some uh, hungry the cameramen, behind. I think, in this uh, facility that might enjoy some. So, um, delicious. Great. So good. Thank you. All right. Well, thank you very much. Um, I hope if we do this again, you'll tune in and uh, certainly check the Recreation Department's website, um, foxboroughrec.com, Fox yep. um, for all the upcoming culinary classes and events that I'm doing, plus um, all the other wonderful stuff that you guys have going on um, for the Halloween season um, and even into the holidays. And then it'll be time to have a whole new season uh, after the first of the year. We'll be yeah, working on that. so excited. And then with the farm stand, we'll see you at 2 o'clock on October 11th yes, to I bake will be your there. pie. Yep. And um, like I said, we have for the free hay rides, um, a guitar, so, so many fun things. Nice. Just to say thank you back to the community. I think that's perfect. Great. Great. Thank you. Thank you.